Hi everybody. So in today's lecture we're going to introduce the magnetic fields and talk about some of the sources of magnetic fields. This is for Physics 2020. So there's two main sources of magnetic fields. These are permanent magnets and moving charged particles or currents. So focusing in on permanent magnets first, um, you probably played with these as a kid, right? And so you probably know already that every magnet, regardless of its shape, has two poles. So you can have bar magnets, you can have horseshoe magnets, you can have little disc magnets. But no matter what the shape, you're going to have two poles. Now, those two poles are called north and south poles. More about that in a minute. Now, if you've played with magnets before, and if you haven't, you must go out and do this immediately, then you already know that like poles repel one another and unlike poles attract one another. So if you try to shove two magnets, two north poles of two magnets together, you'll feel a repulsive force in between those two magnets. But if you hold a north pole of one magnet near the south pole of another magnet, then you can grab it and pull it close together because of the attractive force between unlike poles. Now, north and south poles are so named because of the way uh, magnets behave in the Earth's magnetic field. Specifically, if you have a little tiny bar magnet, like a compass needle, as shown here, what will happen is, if that magnet is free to rotate, then the magnet, when placed in an external magnetic field, will rotate to align with the field. Now, it was found that one side of the magnet always rotated towards geographic north, right? And so they called that the north pole of the magnet, and that the other pole of the magnet wanted to rotate so that it pointed towards geographic south. But since we know that dissimilar poles attract one another, what this actually means is that the north pole of the magnetic north pole of the magnet points towards the geographic north pole of the Earth, means that the geographic north pole of the Earth is a magnetic south pole. And that's shown in this little cartoon over here. Okay, so the Earth's magnetic field is generated as shown. Okay, of course we do have that bar magnet right in the center of the Earth. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but the geographic North Pole is the magnetic South Pole of the Earth. And so when your compass needle is placed in the magnetic field, it will rotate to align as such. Now this force in between magnetic poles, and we'll give more details about this later, but just like an electric field and the, char and the uh, force between uh, charged particles, it varies as an inverse square. So the force will decay off as one upon r squared, where r is the distance in between the two poles, as it, uh, as it gets further away, that force dies off like one upon r squared. Now, although Dirac did postulate the existence of particles which were magnetic monopoles in the 30s, we have not yet found a single magnetic pole. By that I mean we haven't found a particle that only has one magnetic pole. We haven't found a, a south pole particle or a single north pole particle. They always come in pairs, right, even at the atomic level. And all attempts so far to detect a single particle with an isolated magnetic pole have been unsuccessful. Now, it's interesting, there is um, some research in physics uh, into materials like spin ice and things like that, where you can kind of force a magnetic uh, monopole to exist within a region of the material, but that's kind of because you freeze the atoms in that region of space to align such that it looks like a North Pole. But it's not a particle, okay? It's not a single particle. It's the material itself that's grouping to behave in that way. Okay, so let's remember, an electric field sound surrounds any electric charge, but magnetic fields um, aren't generated around just any old electric charge. In fact, the region of space surrounding moving electric charges contains a magnetic field, okay? So a magnetic field also surrounds a magnetic substance making up a permanent magnet, but if you uh, want to create magnetic fields, you've got to either have permanent magnets or currents which are moving charged particles, okay? Now, permanent magnets, if you really delve deep, and we'll talk more about this later, actually do come from the same source, which is the moving charges at the atomic level. So it's the orbits, for example, of the electrons around the nucleus that are creating magnetic moments at the atomic level that then give rise to uh, permanent magnetic moments for the material as a whole. Now, let's talk about magnetic fields. We're going to use the symbol B 
uh, with a vector sign over the top for magnetic fields. Magnetic fields are vectors. They have direction and magnitude. And the direction of the magnetic field is given by the direction that a north pole of a compass needle would point in that location. Okay. Um, you can also use magnetic field lines to show how the field lines as traced out by a compass would look. So what do the magnetic field lines, for example, for a bar magnet look like? Okay, so here's what they would look like. They make loops. It kind of looks like an electric dipole, right? If you remember our lectures on electric dipoles, which are a positive and negative charge separating one another, you had a dipole moment and the electric field lines looped around, just like the magnetic field lines for this bar magnet do. And so you can see that the field lines point out the north side of the magnet, right? And then they loop around, making a loop pointing in at the south side of that bar magnet, okay? Now, I do a demo in class where I show you that this is true, and this is kind of what that demo looks like. What I do is I sprinkle down um, iron filings uh, on top of a, a dish, right, a clear dish, and underneath the dish is a, a bar magnet, and it, and it looks just like this. The field lines um, are traced out by the little iron filings, which are themselves little compass needles, okay? Um, and so, shown here is what it looks like. Now, you can also expand that demo a little bit and put a north and south pole next to one another and show how the field lines would point from the north to the south pole there, okay? Um, and if you put two dissimilar poles together, you can show how those field lines kind of diverge out away from one another, showing the repulsive um, action between two like poles, okay? So that's what's going on there. Now, other sources of magnetic fields are currents and moving charged particles. And so we're going to address those when we talk about the Biot-Savart law, which I'll do in the next lecture. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions.